Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Lawrence Loach, and we are back with another episode of SUP Podcast. This is episode number 123. Uh, I'm going to bring in my, my amazing co-host. Uh, we got uh, Chris Cheney. What up? And we got Luke Travisi. What's up, one, yo? One, two, three, baby. One, two, three. We're getting up there. <laughs> one, two, one, twenty-three, man. We got, uh, we got a lot of good things to get into. I guess we could start out with, uh, with I think what everyone's kind of been talking about these last couple of days. As uh, today's Sunday, as we're recording, uh, yesterday, Saturday, uh, July twenty-fifth, and Friday, July twenty-fourth. Uh, about 99.9% of the people who were looking to get uh, some sneakers were uh, denied. Oh, uh, we had the off-white uh, Jordan 4 uh, women edition. Yep. Uh, yep. Which, uh, which obviously uh, a lot of people uh, definitely took the loss on. And Multiple L's. I mean, this was L weekend for sure. Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly what this is exactly what we talked about with with, uh, with sneakers. We said it's the same thing that happened with the Travis Scott two seventies and the and the mm. uh, and the chunky donkey whatever the yeah. You know, Nike's handing out multiple losses except this day this time it wasn't spread out. It was just back to back days. Back to back days and three different shoes if you count the green bears too. So it's back to back to back L's. Well, yeah. Brutal. Let's uh let's kind of let's like break in. Let's kind of talk a little bit about the off white uh force because uh now we are basically two years of seeing Virgil and Nike uh, uh come together and uh these were very interesting. We we all I think we all kind of agreed that these were very uh mm-hmm. dope shoe. Um, we we knew it was going to be difficult. I mean, when we found out they were women's sizes, that's always difficult for especially guys who have bigger sizes because they tend to make less uh, bigger sizes, which is usually, like, you know, 11, 11 and up, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, Nike originally said that they were going to go up to, I believe, a 14 or 15, if I'm correct. And then they kind of siphoned it off at, uh, at a 12, uh, 12 and a half, uh, which it went up to a women's 14. Um, yeah. We're, we're seeing, listen, this is, I'm going to say this to you guys, and I think you can kind of agree with me. Um, Four-figure resale prices out the gate um, is something that is very new. Uh-huh. It's very alarming to me. And the most alarming part, it's not crazy for it to happen. Yeah, like it's like it's kind of been it's kind of been growing to this point. Like we're kind yeah, of just reaching like the tip. Now point. there's no surprise. The, the, the grateful deads, you're like, okay, I get it. These, I get it. The chunky dunks, you were like, okay, I get it. Like all these were kind of like, yeah. Okay. Even the Travis now, Scott so, SBs too. You kind yeah, of get that one. It's yeah, no, it's, it's scarier. If, for people who've been around longer, it's scarier to us, of course. Like, mm-hmm. Lawrence, you and I are looking at this going, like, why did we not just save every sneaker we ever owned? Why <laughs> did we even wear anything we had? No, nah, you know, you know, it's funny to me. I mean, I, I think, obviously, we, we've discussed this in the past. I mean, it's definitely a combination of multiple things. It's that, um, A, people, if people are dumb enough to, to really spend four figures on a sneaker that just dropped out the gate, that's an issue. Then we also have the people getting that fucking – they were getting that COVID money, man. That yeah. that you know, the CARES Act money, and and, and then it became less of a, a worry to to start out with uh with the twelve hundred dollars shoe. Um, as you can see, I mean, obviously the bigger sizes are definitely going for a lot of money. I don't really see them coming down too much. Uh, but like when you start getting into the, the women's, you know, the women's eight, you know, women's nine, nine and a half, I think you're gonna see definitely a, it's gonna drop maybe into the the um the three figures the high three figures seven eight nine hundred dollars obviously these prices are still high because a people haven't gotten pairs in hand yet and yeah. once you know the trend is always you know once the release happens um and people strike out then people are going to spend you know the the high price and then when pairs come in you just see a slight dip and then once those people spend you know they get those pairs then we're right back to the and we skyrocket. Yeah. Um, so actually, they may not I, even be the best. 
No, you can go, go, go. And then I'll, I'll follow. No, no, I was going to say, they may not even be the best off-white four that we, we see uh, in the pipeline because we did see the, uh, the bread off-white fours, which yeah. mm-hmm. if these are an indication of where the four, the off-white four in terms of the, the secondary market where it's going to be, then, I mean, fucking a pair of black and red uh, off-white fours, I mean, we might start out the gate with, you know, a, a resell of two racks easily. Yes. Yep. Yes. When I, what I was going to say, too, just to follow up on your uh, the way you were formulating how the price is going to move, um, going back to the um, Grateful Dead dunks. So I was with some skater kids the other day for tenant, tenant people and associates, like that, that, that realm, that cape. Um, one of the kids who uh, he able, who's able to get a pair of the Grateful Deads, I guess, and we were talking about the resale value of that shoe particularly. Because normally, mm-hmm. it'd be like how you were saying, Lawrence. It'd be like, they go up until they, they get them in hand, and it's down, it'll go back up, and there's waves to it. But is it worth it to save some of these? Because that was the conversation we were having. Because like with the Grateful Dead ones, it's like, I think you should hold those. Things like the sales push immediately. Yeah, I don't know how think, you guys feel about it because, like, I, sneakerheads are fickle and they're, it's a microwave culture now. So that shoe will only be this hot for so long. And it will just go into, like, this weird grail sector of sneakers because of the hype boxes it checks. But with the Grateful Deads, there's the, uh, the Y factor of the deadheads. Mm-hmm. And sneakerheads aren't used to such a de- – like, an outside prospect – in the sneaker realm. Yeah. Do you hold those and wait for a deadhead to buy them for an insane amount of money in 10 years? Or do you sale it and ship them now? Uh, I say hold. Uh, the only reason I say hold is because because of the materials they use. That I think I mentioned it last week on the podcast. When you have a shoe with a firm material, it's very hard to upkeep. So if you keep them dead stock, the, the price will only go up because there'll be less and less pairs that are dead stock. Uh, you can make that argument with every sneaker, though. Yeah. It's true, but, like, it's easier to clean. Like, you'll find a cleaner pair of the sales than you would, the like, a fur pair, you know? Like, oh, I, was, I, was, I, was for, I was trying to keep the two arguments separate, but, I mean, since we, we've got into the, the Grateful Dead uh, debate already, I feel like, um, Did I jump the gun? Uh, you just you kinda, had you such kinda, a great. You kind of jumped that. the gun a little bit. But it's it's all good. I mean, we we were definitely. You gave me going. such a good segue because you were doing the graph movement. I was like, oh, here we go. But it's uh, all good. We we Chris we were so happy for a second. He was like, look, I'm doing I'm doing the podcast. <laughs> it's all good. We we were talking a little about off white, but um, what you're saying. I want to bring it back of, there. I just you just it had such a good segue into the. Comparison. No, it's fine. No, no. I right, listen. I'm I'm not. I understand what, what both of you guys are saying. I feel like with with the uh, Grateful Dead's, they're such a because the meteoric rise that we've seen of SBs for the last couple of you know for the last year or so, um, it makes you wonder like, all right, how much more can it go up? If that makes sense, like if these grateful, yeah. like if the green and the yellow pair settle at around, you know, fifteen, just say they settle at fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and then you know the orange pair is its own entity because of the way it was released. But I feel as if you have to also take into consideration the way this. The only reason why these shoes are where they're at now, at you know, one point five, one point six, is because of the SB hype. You know, because these were released, you know, maybe three years ago. No matter, they could have put Grateful Dead. They could have put fucking, they could have put, you know, Jerry Garcia's face inside the insole. I don't think we would have saw, you know, we would have saw the, the prices that they are now. So you have to kind of look at it one of two ways. You either, like you said, you capitalize and because you capitalize on the shoe itself now, you sell, you make your, you know, you sell them for you know, 16 times what you paid for them. And then you in- invest that money into other sneakers. You could do it that way. Or you can say, oh, I'm going to hold for another, you know, three, four years and then hope that they go up another five, $600, which there's a possibility it may not even move that way. You have to realize, like, when you have a shoe this high, that when you, when you have a shoe this high, there's, on- there's a certain market of people that are willing to pay that price 
And then afterwards, it just gets to the point where it's like people aren't purchasing a shoe for, for that amount of money. You're going to have your, you are going to have your people that come in some money that didn't have money. That's like, all right, these are a grail. But, and I, you know, I use that term loosely with these, but what I'm saying is I, I looked at, you looked at the way, say, for example, the, the Ben and Jerry's release went and you were like, all right, these are going to keep skyrocketing and they're going to, you know, right now they're at 1800 and then that's in, you know, early June and by August, they're going to be two grand. And it's like that movement didn't really happen with the shoe because of the amount of money that it was. Right. So it kind of stayed level and may and may even have gone down maybe 50 60 dollars now granted of course i feel like just like as there's more you know more people purchase them to flip them but there's still so many desktop pairs and there's still so many people that are only willing to pay sixteen hundred dollars for a pair of hundred dollar sneakers that it, it it's a little it's a little tricky it, it like when you look at sneakers that that hit those high marks that you're talking about that's a sneaker that starts out at four hundred dollars five hundred dollars mm-hmm. on the secondary market and then it's like oh shit now as the pairs start to you know dry up now you're like oh fuck if i wanted to sneak i could have got it you know a year ago at six hundred dollars now it's seventeen hundred dollars like that's the way but when you're starting at this high of a, a, a fucking price nah interesting well i mean uh, it's st- it's like just talk. It just keeping the, these two releases from the weekend in mind, right? Like Lawrence, I agreed with everything you said, um, yeah. but it is interesting to think about the the external factors of like what the deadhead is, because they will pay. They'll pay that immediately if they're like, bro. Uh, I don't know like other good bands to compare it to because I'm not within that space. But I imagine like Fish is sort of similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe Dave Matthews, right? Do people still listen to them? But like those guys, they spend all the amount of money they can to do anything involving these guys. Mm -hmm. um it's it's similar to what the sneaker hype beast kid is when it Mm -hmm. comes to stuff like virgil nike travis those those main checkpoints Mm -hmm. but it's a shorter span right but how like it's it's just so interesting to compare these guys so like this orange one is crazy to me i didn't realize it was this hot yeah of course it only released one place or at least two places. Three thousand. Yeah, yeah the, two places. the Grateful Dead website and San Francisco. FCC in San Francisco. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe let's focus on the orange, mm. the orange one versus the sale. Um, okay. Right now, I don't know which one is hyper. I don't know which one. I I hate that term that I just said. By the way, I don't know which one is hyper, but. I mean, do you guys think the orange will last longer down the line than the sales will? Hmm. I I think the orange will always uh, will always command the higher prices and, and and a high price just because of the way they were released. When they were released at a skate shop in San Francisco, who you know obviously <laughs> all the pairs probably were not released to the public. Yeah, it's like a friends and family. And pair, which, I talked to the, the guys about that. One was complaining that people complained about that online. And I was like, all right, so what's your take? They're like, you not skating. Shut up. Don't come in our shop. And I was like, okay, that's what we all thought you guys thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's it, you know, I, I think that that's a problem. It's, it's always a problem with, with, skate, with skate people. I think they have the the air of all right this is our this is our thing and now people just want to be cool with the sneakers but it's like that's what sneakers are i mean like i I feel like sometimes like it's like you don't have to be a grateful dead fan to fucking wear the sneakers you know like you don't have to be like there's so like people become such elitist when it comes to fucking shoe it's like it's like people are like oh well you can't wear Jordan's because you never saw him play or like you don't know like it's like mm-hmm. shut the fuck up like some people just like the color scheme some people like this yeah, the yeah that's true itself. and I and I feel like skate pe- skateboard company or skate shops are the most elite snobby people when it comes to any any type of release whether it's clothing with you know supreme or whether it's, it's sneakers yes I get it you know, these type of releases make skate shops. It brings in the majority of their money because at the end of the day, they can A, they can sell, they can fucking backdoor what they want. They can B, create a 
whole fucking merch run just for the shoe. But I mm-hmm. think that is, that is very smart, which a lot of these skate shops do. When a sneaker like this comes out, they say, hey, here's some t-shirts to fucking go with the shirt. And then sometimes they'll be like, hey, if you want a raffle ticket, you gotta buy, you want an entry to our raffle, you gotta buy a fucking t shirt that we concocted for this, this sneaker alone. Yeah. Or you're gonna wait in a virtual line for two hours. Oh, yeah. Two hours? Come on, bro. That was more than two hours. I mean, yeah. I got in quick. I got in on the Grateful Dead side. I was like number 360, 3,600, I mean. Yeah. Um, I was like, you got, like, Lawrence, you had like a 75K in front of yeah. you. Wait. So, so for the listeners out there, the Grateful Dead, they, uh, they did a, uh, they did a 24 hour raffle. Uh, it was a queue. Uh, I mean, I, I got in went at 75,000. I saw there were some numbers like a hundred, 115,000 people in the queue at one point. Um, it went by super fast. Um, I will say that the way the raffle was handed handled and the people who actually won uh, it was pretty smooth once you got they they had 900 uh, I believe winners that they sent out emails to uh, I mean once again if you're if you're talking the 900 pairs versus you know 200,000 entries yeah you're the odds are very slim but from mm-hmm. what I heard the people who got in smooth sailing the orange pair obviously sold out immediately followed by the green and then the yellow mm-hmm. the, yo the orange probably was like the fa- like the fastest uh L, I guess I'll say, and I've seen in a while because, bro, I I saw more things on like whatever platform you want to discuss about the orange one specifically than I've heard about any off white, any Travis release, any of that shit. Right. That was the quickest L I've seen the whole nation take. So yeah, an immediate L. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean when you when you have a when you have a three sneaker pack and then one of the sneakers are only released that you know, one physical location, then the rest are, you know, are online. Yeah, I of mean, course. it's going to so, yeah, it sense. But, um, yeah, I, I, you know, once again, I think, I think the problem with everything is we're in a situation now where if you can, if you can even jog your memory back a few years ago where sneakers would come out with, with a lot of hype, and the average resale price would be six, seven hundred dollars. And we're talking, you know, I'm talking 2018 with Union Ones, and then I'm yep. talking, you know, uh, Mars Yards. I mean, some of the off white stuff was, I mean, I remember the off white Blazers, uh, the secondary market, you can get them for like five hundred dollars at that, you know. Uh, off white Jordan Ones were, what, thirteen hundred, and even, and then even then, you know, that was high. So, I mean, you look at stuff like that and, and you're like, all right, well, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars and you can kind of play with it from there. But we're automatically jumping out the gym with fourteen, fifteen hundred dollar SBs. And I think that is a, uh, a sort of, to me, it's a recipe for disaster. But no, it's a real big if you problem. can sell them, if you can make your money, then, hey, fuck it. It is what it is, you know? Yeah. Uh, um. No, but wait, we didn't really answer the question though. Like, so long term, just I'm this is more me. I'm curious just to hear you guys what your thoughts are. So, like, let's just use orange in the sales. Which one do you think 10 years from now is going to be like the more coveted one? Because that's the real question I was trying to get at. Because they're two now, you see, you make that face, Lawrence, but I don't know, dude. That's why I'm saying the deadheads as an entity in the sneaker game with this specific drop. They're a, a type of person that's not normally in this space that's willing to pay this much money. Oh, without a, I think without a shadow of a doubt, what's going to be more coveted in 10 years? The fucking Grateful Dead. Oh, I thought, trying, I thought yeah, you were going to go off-white. Everybody's no. been trying to cancel Virgil for the past, like, six months. I, oh, bro, yeah, dude, he's really having a rough time. Not only is he catching yeah. L's for that BLM shit, but he's catching L's just because people can't get his sneakers. And the it has, nothing thing. Do, it has nothing to do with Virgil being canceled. I think it just has to do with when you look at it, when you break down two pairs of sneakers, you look at an orange grateful, uh, a sneaker that's attached to the Grateful Dead versus a, uh, co- a Jordan 4 collab, which granted, fucking thing, the, the, that off-white is amazing. But I mean, the, the Grateful Deads are obviously going to be coveted. And they're, they're more, uh, more limited. You know, they're more, the pairs are going to dry up. Yeah. And then also in 10 years, People act like Jordan 4s are built for you to wear 10 years or 15 years down the line. You can wear a dunk 
15 years like from now, you know, and and, and the worst thing you have is the soul separating, but you can fucking fix that. Yeah. You can't do nothing when, when your fucking midsole pops and, and busts on a four. <laughs> That's true. Um, okay, uh, just to get off this for a quick second, but not to go completely off, because I do want to go on and I want to talk about that uh, Virgil's uh, MCA uh, Supreme Box logo sample is going on for sale. But also, I had a friend hit me up um, and he showed me this asking if it was real. I sent you guys this in the group chat. But it's just crazy that this email scam is like reaching our friends. At least to me, like you hear about all these crazy stories online and stuff. But yo, like as far as a scam email, this looks pretty legit. I mean, when you read the right. copy, it's sketchy. But at first you're like, oh shit, I just got some sneakers. Right. Uh, I'm just upset as somebody who caught L's all weekend. I couldn't even catch a fake W. <laughs> you know? Bullshit. Yeah, we can't even get the scam emails. We can't even. Exactly. Who are we? I thought we were sub podcast, fucking leading tastemakers in the sneaker world. <laughs> we were bringing. We were fucking. Uh, we were the ones who were burgeoning the fucking. The, the fucking rise of the SB for the past fucking year. And then every, it comes. And everybody's like, all right, well, go fuck yourself, some podcast. No fake <laughs> emails for you. Fucking, no, I want some goddamn respect around here. I mean, look at this, though, because, all right, so not only is COVID made things weird, um, yeah. raffle and in-person stuff is a whole different game than it was even three years ago, say, but even five, seven. It gets crazier as you go back and look what we used to do. We used to sleep for sneakers. Now mm -hmm. we have a robot that we bought to buy up for us. But, I mean, like, all those things add up to this making some kind of sense. I mean, luckily, the, the kid didn't buy it who hit it with me. Yeah, he's a little smarter than that, which, which is good. But all this makes sense. Mm -hmm. Basically, really I just, guys, be careful. I mean, because that feeling of winning, some, like, a grail like this. I don't want to call him a grail. A, a, a hype not sneaker a, not like a this. grail. Yeah, don't call him a grail. Yeah, I'm not going to call him Not that. a grail. Um, but – Winning, even like getting an email like this and feeling that for one second you just came up on three grand if you're looking yeah. at the orange one, you might be willing to just cash app some random shit. Right. Um, I think yeah, I think you, you have to be on the, the lookout. I mean, I saw I saw a lot with the uh with the Ben and Jerry uh SBs where you know people were getting these type of uh these type of emails. Uh you just have to kind of be uh aware it's hard to but when you see certain things like in this email they're like we're taking cash app that that right there is um red flag that's a huge red flag uh i mean the paypal's in there though too yeah but even then this is a reputable skate shop you don't think yeah. they they have like a system to take your credit card that's I, what I'm look saying. i'm not even but paypal's as a platform is legit enough to be like oh I'll just paypal well, I think I think that's uh, you know when you start thinking, you start seeing that you can once you receive the total payment of one hundred and twenty-five dollars, that's tax plus shipping included. I mean, you know, I granted, I understand if you're if you know this is you know, it, you sometimes you're not going to think like yeah I'm getting scammed, but there's certain red flags. I think anytime you see we're taking cash app, uh, there's no there's no link to purchase from their website. Like there's certain right. yeah on that that uh, i think are are definitely um a red flag and in, in, in something that's false yeah um, for sure speaking of false and uh red flags uh this week we were teased with a uh a picture of a uh a jordan 4 that people are speculating that will be the upcoming union jordan 4 release mm, yeah oh yeah um, it was met with a lot of uh, disgust on the internet. <laughs> um, it is very. It is. Um, I, I will say this: they were not the most attractive uh, sample per se, but. Uh, what happens a lot of times like this, you will see something where you'll see the sneaker, you know, with the guy, you know, in a, in a factory or a warehouse or he's wearing, he's got a protective glove on. And then when you see him on feet, then everyone's mind kind of changes. Right. Uh, That's remember, true. That does happen. I remember the, the union, union has been 
pretty good with their collapse. And I can go back as far as, you know, 2005 uh, when they did the Union 180 and how crazy people were going for those Union 180s. And, and then we had the Union 1s, which were kind of, you know, some people were on the fence and now it's, it's turned out to be arguably probably a, a top three uh, or four Jordan collab, Jordan 1 collab in the history of Jordan 1s. Uh, this union obviously definitely is different. Uh, if it is the actual collab, uh, there's certain things about it. Obviously, it definitely has a swap meet uh, <laughs> fake vibe to it, to say yep. the least. Yeah. But uh, well, let's just before we like condemn union and 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 tell them to fucking go back to L.A. Um, <laughs> Let's give it a shot. Honestly, I'm not even mad at what we're looking at right here. The only thing that really upsets me is how they didn't knock the hole off of the plastic part that goes up to the last lace hole. Hmm. That, to me, really bothers me. Because that material, it's it's not like I have a problem with that material, but with, without taking the hole out, it just looks it looks off. Like, I'm, and maybe I'm just used to looking at the floor a certain way. But, like, just take the notch out. What are you guys – you're not doing anything by keeping it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a new – they had to pay for that. That's, like, a new like a new piece. Unless there's other fours that I haven't seen that have the, the one piece together. But they had to pay for that. Like, why would you Why would you do that? The world may never know. But, um – do you guys? Do you guys act? Because there's 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 rumored to be two colorways of this sneaker that comes out, and it's, it has the, the release date is upcoming. It's supposed to be August fifteenth, if I'm correct. Um, um it says somewhere probably here. Uh, yeah, August fifteenth is the supposed. Um, what are? I mean, what are we feeling with the short tongue? You know, and the sneaker in general. Are we like you know? I mean, I like buying sneakers new. And have them look new. But honestly, this, like, vintage sole look, it doesn't really bother me on these. It's really just that plastic piece. And I kind of wish maybe that the white was also the vintage yellow. But other than that, I'm really not that mad at it. I get why people hate it, though. It's just I don't think people keep their consistency with the shoes they hate. Like, there's shoes that, that people love that look like this, and then they hate on these. It's like, all right, weren't you just trying to get the sales? Well, I think sure. I, I think what happens is a lot of times I think because the Union One was such a it's it's widely regarded it's, it's a love sneaker people see the yeah. the black toe and, they, and they're like fuck these are amazing and then and then you see a follow up and it's always hard to make a sequel you know just as good or great as the original Jordan and I feel like um I feel like that's where the hate is coming from and I feel like it's the four I mean obviously when you look at collabs and you look at I think the Jordan One is probably Obviously, it's one of the easiest, not easiest, but it's, it's hard to fuck up a Jordan 1. Yeah. A 4 is pretty hard to fuck up, too, but right now, these are, you know, these aren't well regarded. You yeah. know what? The thing about, it's hard to fuck up a 1 just because of the, the panel situation and how you can color block mm -hmm. it. Right. Like, and also, there's been so many versions of the 1 that it like you've registered enough in your head probably even like regular people moms dads mm. uncles and like old people could probably color block that to be easy because of the amount they've probably seen over the years of existence fours though doing something creative with four is very risky which even at the actually now that i'm thinking about it which is probably why virgil didn't get risky with that because it's it's a hard silhouette to take a risk on that yeah. could bomb real quick i mean like the five had a little more versatility in it, which is why he was probably able to punch the holes and get some hype. But you can't, a four has, it's like, a, I guess it's a pure conceptual shoe. I guess so. The four is, I mean, like I said, when we, when we look at fours and uh, well-regarded collabs within the Jordan four, it's, you know, it's calls, it's, um, it's Levi's, it's uh, Travis and they've Scott, all been you know, pretty simple. Well, that's what I'm saying. They all, I mean, yeah. Travis, the blue was a little, you know, was, was at first, and, and even that shoe was, you know, when it first came out, people were like, uh, some people liked it. You know, a lot of people were like, some people were like, uh, and now it's well regarded. But I mean, Levi's, they did something with the denim and Cause did, you know, his thing. Um, 
I think these will, I think once people start seeing these on foot, if this is the, you know, it's, it's hard to see when, when it's choked up and it's fucking, you know, and the laces are yeah. choking up. The sh- you have to see these on someone's foot first, I think. And then we can kind of go from there. I remember when I saw these, the first thing I thought was like, oh, they're previewing like a winter, another winterized mm-hmm. war. You know, like it didn't, when I, I had to read the caption to figure out this was uh, from Union. And I don't know, man, like, I think that's just the biggest disappointment is just that, you know, when you think of Union, you think of those ones and then you go, I mean, this is the, this is what they could come up with. Um, but besides well, that, yeah, I'm willing to, to wait. Uh, I'm willing to wait and see what's up, you know, there, uh, yeah, this this is still a sample, so who knows? They might come out different. How do we feel about the air versus jump man on the back? Oh, I mean that's without a shadow of a doubt. I mean that's what we you know, that's what we need. Yeah. No, that's what we need, but I mean you can't you can't have a collab and then put a jump man, put a, a you know, no. It has to be some yeah. type of air. Even even cause have the you know, the cause symbol and then the air. Mm-hmm. You know everything. You know now the uh, the Travis Scotts actually used a uh, a jump man. Yeah. yeah. So. But they also have the Cactus Jack lo- logo on the other one. So, right? uh, did they? Yeah, one side had the. If I'm remembering it correctly, one side had the the Jordan uh, Jordan. Logo, and then the other side had yes, the Cactus correct. Jack cross. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All yeah, right. Well, I, 200 I points it. for Luke. Luke is on the floor, 200 points for <laughs> Luke. Yes. I think it's so interesting. I remember when the Travis Scott, uh, when the Force came out, and, and they were around $400, and people were like, oh. And now that shoe is over $1,000. See, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking about in terms of the way the way shoes, uh, they have that that – that climb as opposed to if if the Travis Scott fork came out and it was at you know fourteen hundred dollars, how how much higher is it gonna go? Right. You know, you unless you unless you're willing to wait four or five years so there's very few pairs. But you know, and, and Travis Scott fours are what, two years old? Yeah. So Yeah. It's crazy. Um Yeah, man, we're we're just uh I well I did you did uh, talk about the the fours, and it's hard to fuck up before. I was what I was saying earlier was I was talking about the bread fours, uh, the ver the off white ones that are rumored to be releasing soon. And I will go on record as saying after the off white one Chicago's, these will probably be the second best off white release if they come out. Um, you know what, Lawrence, I am, uh, I'm going to agree with you and, and it's going probably Chicago one, then mm-hmm. this, and then I'm going to even go sail just cause they're the most regular shoes out of all these. No, I got Jordan one Presto and then maybe these. Well, even the Presto is pretty true to being a Presto. Right. But no, you're right. I should have said Presto too. But all, well, like those are the most normal ones out of all these. Mm-hmm. Well, I think yeah, I think you're gonna if, if these actually do release, I think a, a Jordan Four, black and red. You know, even if you you know if these come out, I think these will be in terms of resale, in terms of hype, they're gonna be just, they're gonna be up there with the fucking yeah, it's gonna be insane. Right. No, I, mean, I forgot I mean, about the the canary yellow uh, Jordan ones. That we never got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those those are rumored to come out eventually. I mean, yeah. I, I guess all of that MCA shit was planned or at least reconsidered to come out at some point. Right. I mean, they even got this. Uh, it's it's not coming out now, but they got the um, the t shirt from that. Yeah. That sample the uh, the Pan African flag with uh, Chief Keef. That's going for ten thousand euros, which is what like. 6,900, yeah. I, I don't know. It's like like 1,600, 16,000 or 15,000. I don't know the conversion rate. Yeah, I have no idea. But th- this is, I mean, you, you want to talk about spending All my stocks are American. 
I mean, you want to talk about spending dumb money on fucking furry shoes? Like, this is insane for a sample. Yeah. Yeah. That you could print, like, you could print yourself. Like, this isn't even that crazy. Like, you're basically paying for this thing right here, that label. What, the the ticket? I think you're paying for the ticket. Uh, all this could be remade. <laughs> Honestly, all this could be so remade. Sure. We but yeah, do... I guess you're paying for this ticket. You're paying for this thing to say it was canceled. Right. And then you, you hang it up in like a, you put it in a, uh, in like behind a glass and that's it. That's what that does. That's how, wear this. that's how dumb this is. Do you guys know who touches this? People who don't give a fuck about this garment are the only people that touch this thing and we want to oh. frame it. That's true. The funny part, it was, already, it was already in the frame when we got introduced to it. Right. Yeah, this, is, that, this shit's crazy. But I guess that's enough of uh, Virgil slash Off-White slash all that shit. Get that fucking out of here. Um, <laughs> well, actually, I don't know if this might be just a Chris topic. You guys can tell me right when I bring it up. But remember how a while ago I was talking about um, how I thought it was a good idea that girl made those AirPod earrings. Oh, here we fucking go. Oh. Okay. Well, your boy Virgil. I'm everything Louis Vuitton now. I, I think it's, I'm just blaming on Virgil. Virgil's making a pair. Right. Doesn't mean so it's can, a good idea. No, not at all. He put holes in a bag, and you fucking chastised him for it. Yeah, and I remain in that position, and I think it's a dumb idea. But unlike this, is these are cool. Oh, these are cool. I like these. I think it's just because they fit your narrative. That's why. How, Sway? Where's Sway? I need to ask him how. What do you mean? <laughs> so they have, a, they have a retail of uh, $350 for... Yes, I mean, I'm not cool with that price. Right. Lawrence, uh, I know you're giving me that this is bullshit look, but what do you think, honestly? Honestly, I think it's, it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> I think just it's, get earrings. Yeah, I think it's complete garbage, uh, and and but people will buy it. Yeah, and I'll <laughs> if they send me a pair, I'll wear them. Chris, about a year ago, I was it a year ago, like a year and a half ago. I think it was it was a it was an episode where I was even a, a guest. I wasn't even a member of the team yet, if I remember. Yeah, correctly. that chick made the um. I mean, this is a little different. This is an ad for to wear in your ear, but have something hanging off. The the mm -hmm. girl that I was like in her idea she made mm -hmm. an attachment on the bottom to let the actual thing hang right like she made earring. the equip like it was like you know how like uh, they have like the eyeglasses with the rope around them so that you don't yes, lose them similar to people. that concept. it was the yes. same concept uh and we me and lauren said that it was pretty stupid and then Chris said it was it was great and now this came out and he's like look see i'm i'm not an idiot lauren louis vuitton did it so no chris it's still dumb I don't think it's dumb, man. I think this is the direction fashion is going to take eventually. Like, we ourselves have relied on technology more and more as the years goes on. Mm -hmm. Like, if we all lost our iPhones today and got, were given a flip phone, we'd probably kill ourselves. Um, and technology accessory culture, I don't know what the fuck to call it. Like, shit uh -huh. like this where you're blinging out your electronics. Like, I mean, phone cases have already been a thing. Right. Now that... We all like everything's the technology pod shit. Cases, they have like the, yeah, all that the shit. Like the, the this is where that. it's gonna go. Eventually, we're gonna start having masks with LED lights on them that say some shit. Like all everything's gonna wrap around technology and wearing it. And this is just a part of that. And that's why I like that girl having that shit hang down because it's like, oh shit, she took a flip on it and actually made it an earring versus mm -hmm. just like this thing we stick in our ear. This is sort of in the same realm. That's all. Well, I just want to keep is... pointing this out. This is, I would say this is worse than the other one because that one was at least creative. This one is way less creative. Way less creative, yeah. But that's, uh, that's I'll, like, I'll give that to you. Because it's less functional, right? This is just more yeah. of a gaudy piece of like, look, I got money. I'm going to spend it. Imagine you have like, but imagine there's somebody out there that's going to put those on their AirPod 1s, their swag. Generation 1 AirPods, and swag. then buy 300. No, no, not swag. It's swag. dumb. You're gonna spend extra money on earrings for your fucking for your AirPods, but you won't spend the money on the second generation. Here's the thing: we had the same kind of debate about on the last episode, I believe. 
It's just like with the tent. There's certain people <laughs> who will spend the money for the right. tent just because. Yeah. And there's certain people who will spend the money for these just because. Uh, will it be for that? Is it for the average consumer? No. No. It's not. Uh-huh. No. No, it's not. It's not for the average person who fucking, you know, has an AirPod or whatever. But like I said, there are people who are willing to spend $350, $400 for this. And that's who they made it for. Swag. <laughs> Fuck you, Chris. <laughs> Uh, oh, I think those things are wavy. I don't give a fuck. Do you have a pair of earrings on your uh, AirPods? No, I wish. Why don't you do that? Maybe. We'll see. We'll see how yeah. it goes. But anyway, moving on. Moving on from all this bullshit. Um, I'll let you guys pick the path here. Do you want to talk about um, Ronnie's Kith adventure? Do you want to talk about the Washington football team? Or do you want to talk about Babe having another Coke? Wait. You can do the Washington football Let's team. Let's do Washington football team, man. Let's talk about this, that shit. This is very interesting to me because I've never seen a rebrand be announced but delayed. Yeah. Uh, generally is, speaking – wait, go, Luke. You can go. This is the dumbest renaming <laughs> of, the, of a, anything ever. Mm-hmm. This is the well, laziest shit I've ever seen in my life. It's clear that they got a blue-haired girl with armpit hair to, th- for, to think of this idea. I think you're just projecting. <laughs> <laughs> I think you wish you were the blue-haired girl with armpit hair who was... Uh, look, I, hey, look, I, one of my goals, my, one of my, like, dream jobs is to uh-huh. help rebrand a team. I would love to rebrand a team because that shit is fucking a bananas project. You get to every little thing on that. Like, like That's even... True. um. Seattle just got a hockey team again, the Kraken shit or whatever. And I, yo, I was eating that shit up. Now, I've granted, it's not like the best branding, but those types of projects are, they, you know, they get my fucking design dick hard pause. Also, have you seen the C, like, have you seen the owner of the Washington football team? No longer Washington Redskins. Um, do you think that guy is hiring a blue haired girl ever? No. <laughs> well, there was rumors that, that they were just fucking around. They are having like, uh, cheerleaders go on excursions allegedly and then you know pawning them off to fucking donors or or yeah it's it's they're supposed wait to, what there's this big washington football team scandal uh when they were the redskins allegedly that would it was supposed to come out in the media a couple of days ago uh i think it's supposed to be this big story about like the the, the breaking news shit. But I don't know, but it hasn't been released yet. But it's like it, it's a lot of things that were going on with that franchise that were just like ultra disgusting. Would if you Whoa. if you Google it, you'll find out and just kind of read about it. And this is like, uh, this is uh, unacceptable. So they should I call mean, their, I'm call. Yeah, you see, Washington Sanitation Department, they'd be good. That'd be good because they're like trash, and then they're doing trash things. <laughs> Boom. You could have like a garbage truck as their logo Uh or like a guy in like coveralls. See, boom, Uh uh boom. Now, now, now it plays to the every man. There you go. Listen, I have an idea here. Anybody else got any ideas? Throw at the wall. Uh The only thing I know about Washington is uh, Seattle, which I know has Macklemore and rain clouds. So they can be the Mm -hmm. Seattle Max or the Seattle rain clouds. Those are the only two that make sense to me. Hmm. I've only been to Seattle once. Oh, uh, it was while I was staying in Portland, and then you I had do... to go to Seattle for a show, and I bombed that whole fucking show. So I'm I'm cool on Seattle. You are aware that the Washington football team is from Washington D.C., right? Which what? What do you mean? You're talking about Seattle. The the, the Washington football team is from Washington D.C., not Seattle. Not... Oh, you know what? I fucked my whole <laughs> shit because I brought up the Seattle. Uh, a new hockey this team. I don't even and know I... where we're going. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? No. You're talking about rain? What the fuck are you talking about rain no. for? I was just talking about Seattle. Oh. I fucked myself the up. The fucking uh. country's capital. Sometimes uh, I just like I, that's why I'm glad Luke's here because I don't be I don't always want to be checking Chris. Like I get tired. No, so, so, <laughs> I get tired of it. I, I get, get it, so buddy. Fucking it's, frustrated. It's a heavy burden. Oh, sometimes. fuck! Oh, I am so stupid. Right. That it's is funny. very funny. It's it's great that you only know a few things about Washington State. But we're talking about Washington, D.C. over here. Uh, 
That's so funny. I was the because then I was thinking like, oh yeah, the Seahawks are over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was surprised Lawrence Whoa. didn't check him, and I was like, I, I nope, gotta do I was, it. Gonna, I was just kind of just like letting him just find <laughs> himself. Hang himself. I knew something was wrong though when I saw Lawrence's up. face. Lawrence will let me walk into a fire if I don't see it. He won't say anything. <laughs> right. I just get confused sometimes. I be like, God damn, bro. Uh, no, that's because. Uh, no, I'm, I am stupid, but that's because I brought up Seattle before. Uh, but <laughs> no, I... <laughs> you know this is going to be called the this episode's called the Washington Rain Clouds. Now I'm going to make a jersey. <laughs> go ahead. There you go. Now you you have congratulations. You have a team to rebrand. Yo, I remember, I remember Chris. I remember one time. Yo, Chris was like, uh, we were talking about the Seattle SuperSonics in the '90s, how good they were as basketball yeah. team. Chris was like, yo, I love the Seattle SuperSonics because I love the Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> on TV. And I was like, yo, son, come on, man. I was like, the fuck, these people are gonna never you know, want to work with us again. Yeah, and they did. So, I mean, <laughs> The oh, day, they mean. put it, yo, the, Luke. They put a Sonic the Hedgehog on set for me. What? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And like, it's just like, it's just like this is, you know. So I just kind of just like, whatever. You want to just say what you're gonna say. Oh say shit, fucking, dude! They don't understand that they thought the dynamic of the show was like, I don't know, a guy named Lawrence and his fucking special needs friend. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, it's just like a make a wish situation. Oh, it is sometimes. It is what it is, man. It, it, <laughs> well, uh, all right. So, aside from my fucking awful suggestions, because I was not even in the right state, what do you guys think it's going to be? Orange skins. The Washington orange skin. <laughs> the, uh, nah, the Washington no. mandarins? <laughs> the Washington orange skin. I don't know, man. I, you know, I, I think um, I think what honestly is going to happen is they're going to f- be forced to sell the team, the owner. Oh, because and, of all the controversy. Because of the controversy, and then, uh, and then fucking Jeff Bezos is gonna buy the team because he's like the richest man ever, and then they'll rebrand from there. I can easily, Bozos. I can easily see the fucking, you know, that type of situation happening. But right now, I think, uh, I don't think they're gonna rebrand. I don't think they're gonna like they're gonna. I think they're just gonna be the Washington Football Team until they get sold. Oh, maybe that's why they didn't rebrand because they're like, we're on the way, we're on our way out. I think, I, I mean, think that has something, and I think not only they're on their way out, but we're in a, we're gonna, we're in a football season that is so many question marks. Will the season start? Will this, you know, happen? This, all this is doing is buying time because at the end of the day, there may not even be a football season. We're, we right. think it will be, but we don't know. Yeah, that's so unclear. I, yeah, I, bro. I, I don't. I don't want to get into it, but that just adds a nastier level to that whole area of the country because there's already some foul shit that went down there, and then to yeah. add this on top of that, <laughs> bro. Yeah, I think we're. Uh, I think it's. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I. I just don't see a name change for a little while right now. So. Well, the calling it this just the state is the dumbest solution I've ever seen. They should have just kept it Redskins and kept it moving. I mean, like we still got the Cleveland Indians, we still got a bunch of problem teams. Like, just I mean, they're setting a weird precedent that they can just like Chris, change you, the name of the teams to states and shit. You, you can't you can't say they could just they should have just kept it because the what the problem was it wasn't just people being outraged. It then it became a, a money issue that they're fucking fed it. They play at FedEx Field. FedEx was on some, fuck that. No, we're good. Like, we're not, you need to change the name. Nike then pulled their merchandise from, from their website. So nice. it's not just about like, oh, we're going we're gonna to fucking keep it as the Redskins. No, they had, they had pretty much no option. They, the owner, Daniel Snyder, was like, yeah, we're, we want to, you know, we're patriotic, blah, blah, blah. There's so much great history. They won a Super Bowl in the 80s with that name. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is money to talk. Right. And, and yes, all this we is, still yeah. have the Indian. We still have the, the fucking Warriors. We have the Chiefs. Those, those franchises definitely will eventually, people, the pressure will come down. But Wait. Think- what? The Warriors, I maybe the old branding, but that, that's when they went back to the Golden State shit, right? It was just to avoid any. So, yes. Yeah, so, with the Warriors. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, people were like if the original like lo- uh, warriors like from the san francisco warriors or whatever like in the 50s or whatever 60s 
Yeah, it was basically, it was on par, equivalent to the, the Indians. It was equivalent to, you know, the Redskins. Uh, then they did do a rebranding, obviously, and they used the Golden Gate Bridge or whatever. Yeah. But uh, the old logo was definitely... Uh, no, not that one, but before that one. Prior to... Uh, yeah, 1962. Yeah, so like... Oh, that one, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Mm-hmm. So, all right, well, you said the other problem ones, but what are they? The Indians? The, Indians, the Warriors the Chiefs, by name? The Associate Chiefs, Chiefs, yeah. The Braves? Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't yeah, even really yeah, think of Tom, that, but that makes Tom sense. Hulk, the Tom right. Hulk, um, yeah. Uh, even, I mean, some, someone's even said that you can go, you can even continue to go with the Dallas Cowboys. You know, mm. some, uh, I mean, okay, but now we're talking about our own stereotypes, which I don't know if that's bad or not. I understand what you're saying, and I'm not saying that, you know, that, that is a stereotype, or our own stereotype, but at the end of the day, someone's going to find everything offensive. You understand if what I'm saying? You, yeah, no, I agree with you, but if you keep that cowboy mentality, then, like, the Celtics are eventually going to get it. Um, only, like, the, the like, uh, ethereal, not real names are going to stick, like the wizard, and we're all going to be, like, the magic of the wizards. Well, you know, it's funny because the wizards – uh is is that friend that name is only 20 around less than 25 years old because the original franchise was called the washington bullets and then the the owner (laughs) all in uh he got you know he he was tired of all the gun violence and and things that was going on so they ended up changing the name in in the 90s to the wizard so but then you even got spurs as an issue if you want to go down that route you could argue Cow if you're going Cowboys, you got to go Spurs. We really do need Sway on this podcast. Yeah, we're, we need Sway. Can we get Sway? Because <laughs> um, how? And, and then, um, well, I had another one. Uh, I lost it. But, yeah, I mean, if you start going down that route, I, I get the Indian shit. That seems to be the last one. But after that, it's like, all right, then we're all just going to. Well, I think Chiefs is something that people are going to eventually say, hey, yeah. Indians, uh, Braves. Uh, those are like the main ones that I can remember because I know I the think, Indians. Yeah, Indians are, the, I think, the next one to go. Yeah, all the Indian shit. Because of like the, the branding, the logo, the mascot is like just a giant red Indian head, mm-hmm. right? I don't know. But yeah, the Re- I mean, uh, Chris, the Redskins didn't have, I mean, I know what you're saying. It's just like, why couldn't they just be like, fuck it? They really didn't have a choice at, at, at that point. You know, I mean, like, you you know way more about this than I do. I didn't know FedEx was telling them to go to chill. I didn't know yeah, they they play at yeah they play at FedEx field. And like I said, Nike pulled their merchandise. And when you have that, like when 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 they're cutting off your your merchandise and your and the and the funding that you're getting, like bro, like it's only a matter of time before you gotta you gotta give it up. You know what's really crazy is that this topic was one of the first that we covered when we first started the podcast. Because remember, I bought that Indians jersey from Major mm-hmm. League. Because mm-hmm. we were talking about, oh, I, I might as well get a jersey now so I don't have to, like, you know, get the thing later. Oh, I'll get it from the movie so it's not associated with the actual shit. So I can mm-hmm. still wear it if I feel like it. But it's crazy that it's taken this long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, obviously, I mean, you know, the reason why I think – stuff like this is i mean it's always been on the forefront people have always been complaining and like hey you need to do something with the name but when we have all this unrest in this country right now i think it then causes like these are the things that that people are doing to kind of say hey we're trying to make things right so if you know if we didn't have you know, protests and you know black lives matter and and you know all these and all these companies trying Nike fucking ha- gave employees Juneteenth off. So you understand what I'm saying? So they are yeah. like, all right, we yeah. are going to try to make things right. And yes, uh, the Redskins, yes, it is. Uh, it's something that people have been complaining about for, for years, but this is what happens. Oh yeah. Blackhawks. I'm looking at a list right now. I was trying to see, it's really just Indian Black shit. Hawks, that's, yeah. 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 I mean, there's some, like, minor league teams. I don't even know what sport this is. But, like, yeah, Seahawks, Warriors, yeah. Uh, Black, I definitely forgot about the Black Hawks. Yep. Yeah, Braves, Blackhawks, Chiefs, Indians. Yeah. 
And then, yeah, there's going to be other couple colleges they are going to have to go through some rebranding, too, if this all goes mm-hmm. down, which is more money. But, I mean, hopefully they – look, I like – one of the main reasons why I like a rebrand is because, like, you can get some new fire shit. And it's, like, mm-hmm. it's not the same shit as your old shit, but it's it's new, but it's also all – it's, like, you just get – it's a new T-shirt or the same thing, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember when the the, uh, the Mighty Ducks went to the Ducks. Yeah, you know, I know that's not as you know that's still it's still some type of uh, rebranding. Uh, Hornets I, became the Pelicans. Which yep. actually, you know what? They probably are gonna if they're gonna change all the names, they're gonna have to address like the Jazz and Utah thing because like we gotta switch that up, make that make sense. Well, what what originally happened with the Jazz and Utah was that the the franchise was located in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Yes. No. Yeah. For sure. So it's it's almost the same thing as the Lakers. When you say why are the Los Angeles Lakers the Lakers, that doesn't make sense. What happened was the franchise was originally in Minnesota, Minnesota. Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. They're known for lakes, so yes. Minnesota Lakers. Then when they went to LA, they just kept the, the name. So I think you know, obviously, like you're saying, like you, there are certain things to be explained, but then there's also certain things that like, yeah, this is a 70 year. We've been to multiple states. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thing, so. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, do you guys let's see? Do you guys want to just do hypeless heat and call so. it a day? I think it's about that time. Um, yeah, it makes sense. Um, wait, I'm trying to see if there was anything else. Um, and, and the biggest rebrand in me is WWF and WWE. Boom! Drop the hammer. Play the fucking, theme song. Fucking Vince McMahon. No chance in hell. <laughs> Lawrence, do you have a theme song of choice? If you were to walk into the ring? Uh, yeah, Randy Orton, I hear voices in my head. Nice. They talk to me. They talk to me. <laughs> you know his brother does comedy? Yes. Really? Nathan. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's like hitting uh, whatever type of open mics there are available. Yeah, he's nice dude. Oh, I did not know that. In New York or where? Yeah, New York. Yeah, in New York. He did. He recently did. All right, so for the listeners who don't know, there's a roast battle thing every Sunday in the city called Comedy Fight Club. Um, and yeah, he, I, dude, I just went because my roommate Lanza was a part of it. So he was like, yo, let's just go over there and kick it. Remember I told you I was going to go to Fight Club instead of Petey Show? Not to get mm-hmm. too inside here, but I went over there. Yeah, I'm like, that guy looks like Randy Orton. And then he's on stage getting roasted like, do burn it up. Mm-hmm. Wow, but yeah, that was yeah. just yeah, that was just a little side note there. But um, no, you're right. That was a great rebrand. But uh, <laughs> World uh, Wildlife Foundation, you getting chased around by by a panda? Fucking had to change your name. Yeah. Um, um babe, Coca Cola. Shit looks cool. Yeah, uh, I mean, all this other shit's whatever. The, I mean, I want to cover it later, I guess, when we have more time, but Travis Scott has a new thing called Cacti that's apparently going to come out, and there's some mm-hmm. images of him wearing it um, across a couple different platforms, um, yeah. different styles, and she's got, like, jeans, hats, or whatever. The logo's all over the place. But just to wrap this up, um, we're going to keep going with our Hypeless Heat segment here, and I've been posting about him for a little while now, but this shoe by Clearweather um, Ooh. fucking is a banger. Now, they don't – they do a weird thing where they don't like name their silhouettes or if they do, I'm not really catching on to what they do. They just have different names for different colorways. So this mm-hmm. one apparently is uh, the Kalahari. I mean, they have other colors like they have white and green ones that they call it Aries and shit that I like. A couple are on sale. So if you guys got some extra Trump money, go fucking buy those because they're heat. But mm-hmm. I like these joints a lot. Yeah. These are nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Th- this brand in general, um, they were one of the first brands that I saw to use Vibram soles but with their own constructed upper. So like this front page is what we got for their spring 2020. If you guys just go to clearweatherbrand.com, you can see this for yourselves, but you can see here, these two soles on the left and right, those are all Vibram soles, which off white, um, even though last week, the, I think the brand I mentioned represent uses them, like a bunch of smaller streetwear sneaker companies have been using Vibram to just get their shit off the ground. So they don't have to pay for tooling. Mm-hmm. and that that's sense. why you'll see like some of these soles that look exactly the same because they are they're the same sole and people just make their own uppers on it but these guys i think are doing a really good job especially with that model specifically the uh kalahari i like that a lot nice very nice uh for me this week i have the palace guard uh retro mids uh from puma 
Uh, reason I like these shoes in particular, uh, they do have like a nice little summer vibe to them. Uh, good ball shoe, I think, as far as like aesthetically. Uh, also, they have Lakers colorways, which I do enjoy because uh, I'm not going to be able to get a pair of Kobe's anywhere. Uh, also, the shoe is incredibly cheap. It's like 50, 60 bucks for a pair. Um, if you're looking for something uh, on the low, I found these like I was up at like one in the morning uh, and these kind of came up in my targeted ads and I was I kept looking at them and I was like these kind of remind me of alien stompers as well yeah which it's is true. another way which is another reason why I like these so it, you know it just a lot of factors came together the fact that they're cheap is just like the biggest reason if you're looking for something a little low-key I would choose these nice yeah uh, so that's all we got right for those that's all i got yeah. and then uh i guess i'll i guess i'll throw my shoe in there we can go rude reese's uh Ooh. i mean it's 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 not like super like hype rude r and then reese's r h e yeah i got you right now Al. i got you right now buddy someone in the discord has these yes i remember oh that's uh, recess the sparkling water these guys <laughs> Yes, I remember these. Yeah, uh, one of the, yeah, some guy in the, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, really? All right, we all took very different approaches to the hypeless heat this week. Yeah, which is five, two, ten, sixty bucks. I like it. You got different tiers this week, baby. Yeah, no, this is how it's supposed to be. We should, yeah. we should be able to call out some cheap shit that you should be able to get on the low if like you're high and you hit your targeted ad like you are. And uh, should be able to, I've been looking at those clear weathers for I don't know if I'm ever going to pull the trigger, but man, I like these and these are nice. These are nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know who has these? Vaughn has these. Vaughn DeHart has these. Shout out to Vaughn. And also go check out his brand because he has his own um, clothing brand too. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. yes. Join the Discord. You can ask about him. But um, I think that's kind of where we're at here. What Any made you pick those, thoughts? Lawrence? You just oh, like the color? I like the uh, color. I like the distress. I mean, I, uh, I like the, um, yeah, like how the yellow soul, like the, mm -hmm. you know, the, yellowish so i think those are uh and you know they, they definitely give me uh you know jordan vibes but not jordans and you know you can still obtain those i mean they are a little expensive but you know you can definitely you know you don't have to worry about them selling out first day so that's true that's true there we and are. mr porter always has pretty good sales so you might be able to find them for a little bit cheaper too all right but i guess that's it 123 um, uh, Washington rain clouds. Uh, <laughs> I am Chris Cheney. We have Lawrence Deloach. We have Luke Trevisi. You can follow us on Instagram and the podcast um, at not that Cheney at LZD three two five at Trevisus. I mean, guys, just I mean, the main thing is join the Discord. The Discord is really where our uh, fan base is cultivated and stayed active. So, just I mean, it's, there's always a link in the description. Also, make sure while you're listening to this, maybe even towards the end here, just screenshot this, share it on Instagram, let people know. We'll repost it if you tag us on Instagram. And, uh, I mean, that's it. That's really yeah, where that's we're it. at. Um, awesome. So I'll be talking to you guys during the week, but we'll talk to you guys at home next week, all right? Peace. Yep. Peace. Right, peace, guys.